is a 3D model I've built. We're looking at a surface topography right now. Um, the big metal head frame you saw earlier, the New York, is right there. Mm -hmm. The road you drove in onto the mine is right there. This is Silver City down in this area with the highway going here. Black lines are underground workings that we've digitized into three-dimensional space. Uh, one of uh, our GIS guys has been working on the north side of the, the district, and I've been working on the south side of the district where we've been drilling. So you can see there's extensive workings down to 2,200 feet in, uh, in uh, depth. And we've drilled most of our holes between 5 and 800 feet in depth. And what we found is we found significant mineralization outside the areas where they had already previously mined. So we're finding new mineralization that they couldn't mine or they just didn't know about. So it's been a very successful program for that. And one of the issues is when you drill a, or when you, when you drive a shaft, you can only do about 10 feet per shift. You have two shifts a day. So you can only do about 20 feet a day of mining. We can drill a 600 foot drill hole in two days. So we can do what would take them months in a very, very short amount of time. We have basic geology here. Again, the blue is all the andesite. The orange is uh, the rhyolite, and the green is the bottom of our mineralization. So we're looking for mineralization above the green line. So one of the things is it looks like chaos here. And when they uh, were mining it back in the day, they, they couldn't explain anything. They, they couldn't explain why there was graves where they were. And so they had very generic lines of where their ore bodies were, which is the best of their knowledge at the time. And so those will be on here in just a second. What I've done is I've started to build new models of how our ore bodies are going to, like what the, the uh, defining characteristics of it are going to be. So you can see we have a lot of drill holes in this area. Very few of them go any deeper than 800 feet. These red lines are the historic, what they consider to be ore. So they thought almost always that there wasn't very much ore outside of these areas. So you can see they're very general, and if they, they didn't understand it, they didn't draw them. A lot of the times they couldn't figure out why there was ore here and why there wasn't ore here. And uh, sometimes it's because of those faults chopping everything up. And so one of the things I've been working on is building a 3D surface to show us how those faults are chopping everything up. So you can see this orange above this point is where we're going to find any mineralization at. So the, the metal volcanic lies below that. You see these cliffs. Those are faults that have chopped it up. So you can see there's a significant drop from here to here. So that's what we're looking for is because now if you were driving a drift into here and you hit that fault, your gold's gone. You'd stop. And then you see all these drifts just in. And part of it is because they hit fault, they wouldn't know where the gold went. So now we can say, okay, this fault dropped this block down this much. So if we want to find the same, unit or same gold as here, we can look down below. So we now have a predictive technique for finding mineralization. So.